Hey everyone, welcome to the latest episode of the Hardcore MBA podcast. My name is Regina Evangelista, CEO of MrOutsource.com and your newest host for the Hardcore MBA podcast season three. Now, before I dive into this first episode, I would just like to say thank you to the past hosts of the show, Erlen Backe and Matthew Turner, for giving me this opportunity to get to interview global leaders and successful business people. I can't wait to dive into their brains and just listen to their success stories and their entrepreneurial journey. And with that said, the very first guest that we have on the show is one of those people and one of those women entrepreneurs that I look up to and I follow on social media and I follow everywhere. She is an expert in public speaking. Actually, she will make you fall in love in public speaking. So if you're like me, who's still developing her public speaking career and who would want to use public speaking to accelerate your business or your career, this episode is for you. So without further ado, let us please welcome Anik Petru. So hi everyone. So we have Anik on the show. She's a talent scout and founder of Speaker Express. So which is a London based speaker agency speaking agency. But I'll have Anik introduce herself. I mean, just to give you guys a little bit a little bit of background, Anik and I have been working for a long time now actually. Uh, let us start. Anik, I can't wait to talk about public speaking, the art of it, the discipline that comes with it, how to fall in love with it if you're scared to doing public speaking, and most importantly, how to use public speaking as a tool to accelerate one's business and career. And before we dive into all that goodness. Annie, can you please just give us a little bit of introduction of yourself and what's keeping you motivated lately? What's going on in the Speaker Express world? Totally. So, you know, when you say discipline, that's definitely the right thing. I remember when I started like years ago, I would always introduce myself to people and I would say, hey, I'm Anik and mm. I have 30 years of experience of being scared of public speaking. And I didn't just simply wake up one day thought, oh, I want to be a speaker. It was quite the opposite. I had a horrific experience mm. at university where I had to talk about genetically modified organisms. Super exciting. But I was hiding for all those years in school. And I always avoided speaking, but then I couldn't hide. And when they called up my name and I was walking in front of the room, suddenly everything blurred. I knew there were people sitting there, but I couldn't see anyone. My hands started sweating, mm. heart beating. I was like, what the hell is happening here? And I'm German and we are control freaks. <laughs> and I was like, there's no way I'm going to live with that feeling for the rest of my life. Mm. And this is when I really started to look into speaking and currently we're writing a book it has taken us a number of years but finally we have got our methodology together we have worked with thousands of different business owners entrepreneurs and D's and CEOs and you know that's really taking everything to the next level and getting it out there beyond London beyond the borders of the UK wow wow that's that's good I mean you, you said that all of us have most of us started afraid of speaking in public and when how do you how do we get started with it how do what's the first step in falling in love with it so i tell you how you can fall in love with it firstly let me take you back how i i started yeah. i started speaker training and they taught me everything about where to stand what to do with your hands you know where to look mm. and for years i still was like something is still wrong you know, it just didn't get any better internally. And then I realized, hang on a minute, you know, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever to the way you feel about yourself if you know what to do with your hands or, you know, where to look. It's the inner game you have mm. to work on. It's addressing the crazy voices, the monsters you create in your imagination. And it's just really going back into that feeling of terror. And not everyone is terrified, but... You know, there's a certain level of imposter syndrome kicking in, like, you know, speaking at a big conference. You're like, oh, my God, you know, there are so many industry peers like they might know more than I do. All that stuff kicks in. And the first thing to do is really starting to make friends with those crazy voices, because there's 7.3 billion people on this planet. At no point in time, they will all 
fall in love with you. You know, there will always be someone not liking you, and that's okay. You know, I'm not saying people will hate you or resent you, but mm. you know, some people will be like, nah, Anik, whatever, you know, I don't care. And other people are like, oh my God, you're great. I love what you do. And the first thing is really accepting that you will never get it right for everyone. That's, that's true. I mean, do you, did you ever find any difference between the, the public speaking training before years ago versus the public speaking training now? Is there any difference in the methodology or in, in you know, just the, the whole art of it? Uh, I think yes, because years and years ago, you know, like, you know, it started in the 30s. It was very much about just really being strong putting on a show and it wasn't about vulnerability or authenticity and what we really do and how we are different and not only us like a lot of people have caught up with that that people don't want a rehearsed robot they want someone who's real who is authentic and you know think of Steve Jobs I think Apple has such a cult following because he was just really real and you know telling stories making the audience laugh and I recently watched the guy the ceo of samsung when they launched the new galaxy or whatever for i don't know. i'm not a fan of <laughs> this you can hear but he was so rehearsed and so scripted and i had no emotional connection to him and i didn't really care you know no word he said actually really resonated with me or touched my heart and I feel that's the difference. And is there um, the digital part of it with Facebook Live and YouTube and that digital aspect of the Internet? Does that also um, affect it or impact the public speaking industry? I say it's very similar. I feel obviously in a way, in my opinion, it's easier to do it live in front of an audience because you can play over their emotion. You can, you know, have like certain commands you can integrate them more you get a response where on a video it's really only you and you really need to manage your energy but also just being engaging all at the same time you know I find Facebook lives whenever people do them and then they go oh hello Anna welcome to life oh hello Keith and you know they're they're naming people I find this so distracting you know I'd rather than watch a YouTube video um, but people really want a human being and I think that as long as you're authentic, as long as you're real and your heart's really in it and you share real stories, then a life can be just as powerful as a real presentation. Mm. Authenticity. It's a, it's a bit with, with how the world is. There's just that fine line with being authentic these days. Do you have any tips on how, how to be an authentic speaker and how to come across authentic? Yeah, it's, can I swear, it's really about having your shit together and often like your presence and your authenticity comes from within so if you're standing in front of an audience and you have all this crap in your head you know oh why did I wear this yellow shirt or will they really listen to me oh my god this person is on their phone and are they really engaged then you're not present you know because you have had stuff going on and you worry so part of your energy is within so it's really important you're just really getting into your flow and really being there for them and we always teach people different grounding techniques so having certain routines you do to address whatever is going on in your head before you actually get on stage and how about also i just also because we watched these public speakers do this the presentation that they have on the screen how powerful is that also to have slides with yes, you when yes. you're presenting? Yes. I love it. I find it super powerful because, well, unless you have 150,000 words on the slides, mm -hmm. then you know, why even bother? But if you, you use powerful images that really help you making your points, it's super powerful. Two reasons why. First of all, you will always have people who are a bit more visual in their learning style then they can really hook on to an image and follow what you say about it. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it also helps you to stay on track. But one of the mistakes I often see people making is that they kind of create their slides first and then put their talk together. But it should be the other way around. You put your talk together first 
And then you use certain slides to magnify certain points because mm. if you speak a lot, there might be a technology problem. You know, sometimes you rock up at the conference and they're mm. like, oh, I know, we said, you know, we can use slides, but apparently the projector is broken. So I, I know wherever I rock up, I can do my presentation without the slides. It's great to have them, you know, but I can really run everything without because I've seen speakers falling off, mm -hmm. not literally, not really, but like, you know, falling off their game because suddenly they don't have the slides and it just doesn't come across as powerful without them. So it's really always. Would you like a sample of the international bestseller, Never Work Again? Then go to youwillneverworkagain.com forward slash book. Just a tour to make your presentation even better, but it shouldn't be the other way around, that they are a crutch for you to deliver impact. Wow, it's there's just so much prep preparation that comes to speaking also. I mean, making sure the tech is right, your presentation is right, um, everything, if you're showing a video, it's playing properly. And also you mentioned mm. um, one of your talks before where you say footage is also very important. Um, when you do speak, do you record yourself speaking or do you have someone that records it for you? So whenever I do a speaking gig, if there's a camera guy there, cool. But if not, it's not that necessary. But whenever we run our own events, like here in London, we run a female speakers conference. We run monthly events. We run club nights, evenings. And we always film it. And then we add things on our YouTube channel. Now, a number of people are often here and then they're like, I'm not getting enough gigs at the moment. I wish I had an agent, like someone who helps me mm. market myself. But it is actually the other way around. An agent wants to see that you can market and sell yourself because they only get paid if you get a gig. So if they, if you struggle to sell yourself, mm. you know, they will struggle selling yourself. So an agent really only wants you if you have too many gigs and you can't handle all those negotiations. And, you know, for them to sell you, they need some really good footage. I don't necessarily, necessarily think you need a speaker reel, you know, it's mm. great. But, you know, especially when starting out, like rather focus on getting more gigs and building your expertise than worrying about, you know, having a perfectly edited speaker reel. You know, I sometimes just, I need like a 20 minute recorded talk of someone and then boom, I can sell them. You know, it's, it's all you sometimes really need. Hmm. And besides, if you don't have the video, you can always create a speaker bio. Yeah, you can. It just really depends. Like with all my corporate clients, like whenever they look for a speaker and I want to place someone, I would never go to them and say, hey, this person is really good. Here is their speaker sheet, you know, or their media pack. If there isn't a video, they don't get the feel of a style. You know, they don't get a feeling of what this person is really all about. So footage is really important and not like here's me doing a Facebook live it needs to be really good quality footage on the stage with a real life audience that's great I mean for, for I think we're down to one of a couple of questions is that how does public speaking accelerate one's business or career how does that help so there are two different avenues like people either come to us because they want to be a speaker and they want to make money or add speaking as an additional revenue stream to their business so they can book at the conference, deliver a keynote, and they get paid, right? That's one option. But for the majority of people, you don't necessarily have to be wanting to be a speaker with big ambitions. Like I personally, for example, I wouldn't call myself a speaker. Like if someone gives me the decision, hey, you know, an evening on your sofa with your husband and your dog or – doing a talk you know I picked the sofa I'm an introvert but if it's a really good business opportunity and it will help us reaching more people then definitely you know that's something I'm always up for so I use speaking to build my business to build the business's profile so more people know about us so it's for us a way of marketing and also a way to really generate quality leads because they get a flavor of who you are. Mm. They get a flavor if you're the right person to help them, you know, with their speaking ambitions. And that's, I feel, is the most powerful way to use speaking. Wow. You also mentioned before that 
public speaking and storytelling should be together. Um, and I think, can you tell us more about that, how to add like storytelling to it? Sure. So remember what I said at the beginning, when I had this horrific experience in university and I blushed like a genetically modified tomato, you know, I could just say, I was always really scared of speaking. This is why I then set up Speaker Express. And this is why we now help people to fall in love with public speaking. Like that's just like a factual representation of what we do. But if you have a bit of a narrative to it, you know, people, you help them activate their their imagination and you take them with you into the story. And that really helps to, because whenever you follow a story, whenever you hear a story that really resonates with you, your body produces a certain hormone and that oxytocin, happy hormone, mm. that really helps with your impact. It's a bit like a post-it note that then sticks on your brain. Remember this, you know, it, it helps you to be remembered. And that's why stories are so amazing. Just watch advertising. They are master mm. storytellers, you know, they yeah. sell so many different things. It's just a really short story. And these ads that have a story, they're always more memorable and more impactful. Yes, I can think of those advertisements already <laughs> off my head. Yeah. Um, we're, we're actually on Facebook and one of them ask you, if they can ask you this, is that how do they become paid international speaker, the, the payment, the financial side of it? Sure, well, I first of all, I would ask, like, where are they at the moment? What is their topic? You know, I always need to really understand what audience they're talking to. So they need a proper audience profile okay. and then super quality footage. That's key if you want to break into the paid market. And most importantly, yes, your expertise has to be there, but also your ability to sell yourself and to negotiate. Like one of the mistakes I often see people make is, they get approached to do a certain gig and then they would ask, okay, what is the budget? But a much better question is to ask what is the speaker fee? You know, so you don't ask them what their budget is. You just mm -hmm. ask, hey, you know, what, it, what does it pay? And I remember mm -hmm. one, of our, one of our clients we worked with years ago, for years he would host this big entrepreneurial conference, you know, and I, I said to him, you know, like, wow, how much do they pay you? It's such a massive, you know, uh, conference and a lot of work. And he's like, oh, it's not paid. And I was wow. like, hmm. And then next year, it came around again. They approached him. And then he simply asked some of the questions. Okay, what does it, like, you know, what what is it paid? How much, how much do I get? He doesn't phrase it that clunky. I can't remember the exact question. But he then eventually ended up being paid 750 pounds. Mm. And he has done it before, you know, free. So it's really about developing a really good strategy on selling yourself in. You know, what are the results you create yeah. with the audience once they have hired you? And that's really, really important. It takes, it depends on where you're at, but it takes between a year, sometimes two years, you know, if you're just starting out to really get to this level and then having an agent or being signed with a bureau and just some bureaus they take on everyone and just just be really wary because you know if they have 2,000 speakers on their books but in reality they only place 200 a year what's the point you know you just rather be signed with one really good bureau who work their ass off with you it's just really it's relationship that's all it is like to really the better the relationship with your agent, the more likely they will always think of you when they're getting you booking in. Hmm. That's, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, the one thing I like about doing admin work with you guys is that how fun your community is. You just put that fun aspect to public speaking. And I, we get to see that on the engagement of your community and very, very impressed with how they interact with each other, how they ask questions and others also helping out. Yes, I hope <laughs> that's because of me. And like me and my business partner, you know, we, years ago we sat down and it's like, okay, what are our brand values? You know, what do we want 
to communicate, even in moments when we are not there or someone else is doing our social media and we came up with all those serious words like honesty, trust, authenticity. And then we're like, hang on a minute, like we're taking this so serious. You're like, we want to have fun as well, don't we? And that's why it's just one of our things. Like, you know, whenever we have like a serious strategy day, we make sure we at some point we just snap ourselves out of it and just have a laugh or go for some fried chicken because, you know, that's what business is really about. You know, it, I mm. years ago I burnt out because I stressed myself out. Oh, this is not going wrong. And I was focusing on all the wrong things. And now, you know, I just have a laugh. If something goes wrong, maybe I don't laugh in that exact moment. If it's like losing a client or, God forbid, you know, someone sending you a hate mail. Oh, my God, I don't want to actually bring this onto me because it has never happened. But, you know, all those situations, I always say like, fuck perfection. You know, it's, yeah. especially when you grow and scale and you build a team, things go wrong. And that's part of it. Mm. We can't wait for your book to be published and we can't get to have people outside London, especially in the Philippines or in Norway or where Ireland is, we can get access to those. Where can they find you? Where where should they go? Um, websites or groups? Sure, yes, you can find us under speakerexpress.co.uk or on social media, it's at Speaker Express. But I'd say probably Facebook is the best way to connect with us. We always, you know, post opportunities there and, you know, some of them are international and that's really a good place to connect with like-minded people who want to build their profile and use speaking for business growth. Yes, and on their website, you can check out the latest events for Speaker Express and their training. Um, so if you want to get the tickets, just go to speakerexpress.co.uk. All right. Definitely. All right, Anik, thank you. Thank you so much for hopping on board on the show. Thank you. I've learned a lot with public speaking. I'm trying to build my public speaking um, career as well here in the Philippines. And I will definitely um, learn from what you've said today. Thanks for having me. This podcast is brought to you by MrOutsource.com. Outsourcing to the Philippines done for you. Mr. Outsource is a recruitment company matching busy entrepreneurs with Filipino virtual assistants so you can have the time to focus on what's important.